And we're back. Okay, this is uh, the piece of netting, and as you can see, I've added a few more uh, pieces of the, the netting material. And uh, what I have done here, you can see as I pick it up, you get a little bit of goopy down there. I've re-wet it a bit because uh, it does tend to tend to dry out a little bit, and I like to be able to work with it damp. And when I put it on on the vehicle, of course, you want it to be damp so that you can get it to lay like you want it to. I have here an old uh, Sherman, my test bed vehicle, and uh, what I'm going to do is show you how I do this. The first thing that you want to do, or the first thing that I do anyway, and there's not really a right or wrong way to do any of this, so you can do these things in whatever steps you want to do, but what, what I like to do is go ahead and take a few pieces of the material, and wherever I'm going to put the netting down, I'm going to put it here on the front glacis plate. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a few down here. And let me see if I can grab up a, a brown one here just so you get a little better contrast. And all I'm doing here is this is these are going to be the pieces of material that would be underneath that would be kind of uh, laid out underneath the net, peeking out from the bottom of the net, if you will. And uh, that way I don't have to worry about trying to to weave them into the net. I can just go ahead and put them right down here. Don't be afraid to overlap them. They obviously, probably, you want that, that overlap. Okay, I've got a couple down there. I think you can get the idea there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the net, and then all I'm going to do with the net is just kind of bundle it up in a way that, that uh, looks kind of pleasing to the eye, where I've got some of these things uh, out and about so that you can actually see them. And if you end up with a lot of them hidden underneath, that's okay, and I'll, I'll show you why here in just a second. We're going to take the extra pieces that I haven't used and actually just lay them on top of the netting. Let me go ahead and just wet the netting just a bit more here. It's getting a little, a little stiff here. I'm just adding a little bit of the, the glue uh, solution there to... Oh, I lost a piece there, just to make it a little bit more pliable. So then I'm going to go ahead and just take this and try and make sure that all of my loose strings are kind of bundled up underneath there. And I can take it and, and just lay it there. Now, of course, you want, to, you want to make sure that you put it in a place that makes sense. This actually is, I would probably trim this down. It's It's... Pretty good size piece of netting here, and I don't know that I would actually use one that big. Let me see if I can add a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And I'm just just wetting this down just so I can get it to kind of lay down a little bit better. And if I've got any loose strands or threads. And what you'll you'll notice here is that you don't see a lot of the uh, netting material. I mean, you don't see a lot of the uh, strapping material that's on the outside of the net. That's okay. And now what I'm going to do is going to take some of these extra pieces here, and I've got more extra pieces left over than I have actually in the net. And then I'm just going to take these and. Carefully lay them on, and I'm gonna keep doing. I never did use any of those from the rather, to my eye anyway, that kind of strange-looking Vallejo medium green. And then just come on down there, and if they want to fight with you, you can kind of. Sometimes you can find a way to use the actual netting to kind of weave them down or you can say well you know what you didn't make the cut and toss it off to the side there kind of jam it in there there so I can grab another one here real quick but I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here and then Overlap these. And so you just want to kind of get 
throw some extra ones on there. That's what I like these uh, the shorter pieces that I cut. Oh, that one just does not want to stay down. And you can just lay them right over. Pull them up. And they can be just anywhere all over the the top of this netting. If you want, you can, like I said, kind of open it up a little bit, kind of push that piece down into it. Uh, try and remember, I try and remember, I don't always succeed, but I'm trying to remember that gravity always wins in the end. And so try and make more of these kind of dangling down slope than flopped up slope. And if you've got one you don't like where it is, you, they're not that hard to pick up and lay down there. And then when you get it to where it's kind of like it's pleasing to your eye, then you can come back with your glue and water solution and then just take it and kind of, I just kind of dab it around there. And when it dries, it'll, it'll, dry really nice rock hard and uh, it should come out it pretty pretty nice for you it's it's an easy it's an easy thing to do I didn't do it on the barrel I know the uh, the British firefly is often seen with the, uh, the netting on the barrel and I'm gonna pull in here with uh, another one that I've done and you can you can see this guy this is the the firefly and I've added some some netting there. I don't know well, how well that's coming out there. Try and get that so you can see the white background. And then on the on the rear uh, engine deck, I've added a, another piece of netting there. Then really the last thing, and I'm not going to waste your time to show you how to do that because you can figure it out, is that if you if you're done with your netting, it's all dried out. You look at it and it's like, oh well, I've got a little piece of this kind of little yellow tape peeking through. That, you can either say, you know what, that's that's fine, or you can come back and touch it up with a little bit of paint. I see a few edges that I might want to touch up. If you think that you want to add some different colors uh, in there to the tape once it's dried to just give a little bit of visual variety to it, you can certainly do that, and that's something that I've done. Uh, quite a bit. Usually when I'm done with it, I, I always think to myself that, gosh, these, it just doesn't look dark enough to me. I need uh, a darker green on on some of the material. And it's easy enough to just come back there and kind of touch it up and, and uh, once it's dried. So there you go. That's adding a little bit of Hessian material. Of course, if you put it on a, a sloping surface, you're going to want to have uh, some way to secure it. Uh, around the barrel here, I don't, I've got some thin, thin uh, tie flying thread that I've used to to tie it on to the uh, the firefly barrel. But if you do put it on the side of a vehicle or uh, on a sloping glacis plate like what we've got here with this uh, this Sherman, uh, you do want to make sure that uh, you show how it was secured because obviously something like that would just slide right off the vehicle. So so secure it to the um, brush guards or the headlights or you know the towing ring some something to to show that uh, uh, that it would actually stay on the vehicle once this vehicle started moving if you're not going to lay it on a on a horizontal surface or you can take the easy way out like I did with the the firefly and just lay it on a horizontal surface and that is pretty much it uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and, and uh, add them here at the end, and I will uh, respond to them as soon as I get a chance to. But it's a, it's a simple technique. I hope that uh, you give it a try and hope that you have fun with it. All right? Thank you.